because when you're in power, you don't want to empower somebody else, okay, who might compete. So you don't want a flourishing economy. He keeps telling us, oh, we're doing all these wonderful things. And he does a little piece there and a little piece there. Now, what happened with the $58 million that, that uh, Niagara County and the city of Niagara Falls were supposed to share from Indian revenue, okay? It sits in an escrow account. Even the Indians, and you've got to give them credit, they said, yes, it's all right to take that money, okay, and give it to the localities because they're providing services to us. So you've got to give the Senecas credit on that one. But Mario Cuomo said, or Andrew Cuomo said, no, no, we're going we're gonna to keep that, that uh, uh, $58 million, okay, and, and they're not going to disperse it. So then I go and raise the issue, okay, I blew it up a month or two months ago, and George Maziars then goes to Albany, says to Cuomo, hey, you know, I got some chits with you because I did your dirty work on the gay marriage bill. I did your dirty work on all this stuff. So you owe me. So I want you to give up the 50, 58 million, okay, and give, let the money come to the localities. But don't do it until a week before the primary because I got to have that, okay, to, to overwhelm my opposition. And that's the deal that's been cut. We know about it. We know what they're up to. But that's the way George operates. The bottom line of what I'm saying is that uh, you got you got an overtaxation problem, you got a union problem, you have an elected leaders problem. George Maziars is a poster child for term limits. What happens after you've been in office for a while? You start to scheme, and it's you forget about your constituency, you take care of your friends and family club, you live off, the, off of the, the, the lobbyists, okay, they, they keep your incumbency by, by contributing huge amounts of money, and by the way, we will publish that next week in the report, or we'll publish the, uh, the monies that, uh, the, the contributions over 2,500, there's not enough room on one page in the paper to print all the contributions over a thousand dollars, we're just going to show the people who, who contributed over $2,500 mm -hmm. to George's campaign this year. And, and, uh, and you're going to see people like Simonelli, who just happens to get all the public works projects that are around here. I mean, you're going to see NFR, who happened to sit there at like, like a vulture over the city and control 175 acres of land, which, which uh, and by the way, the, the, the head of NFR is a guy named Milstein. Who just so happens to be the new chairman of the uh, 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 Empire State Development? Uh, I mean, you've got all this incestuous conflict. George allows it. George participates in it. George's narcissistic attitude about things, the arrogance of the man, have, have kept this area suffering and will continue to keep it suffering with nonsense. A couple breadcrumbs here and a couple breadcrumbs there, and he's feeding it. Other than that, it's the Friends and Family Club. He happens to have somewhere about 15 to 20 people from his Friends and Family Club work at the New York State Power Authority. Does that taint his ability as head of the Energy Committee of the Senate? Uh, 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 does that create a little conflict from him in auditing and keeping track? No, not in his mind, okay? It's power. That's what it's all about. That's, that's a pun. But, uh, right. yeah, you want to know what's holding Niagara Falls down is Niagara Falls, the so people that's... of Niagara Falls, the elected officials of Niagara Falls. And uh, not, until you start making those changes, you know, everybody says, oh, George is so powerful. George, George did all these nice things, too, and people don't realize he gave away $600 million. $600 million can pay off all the debt of every municipality in that 30 mile radius uh, of the power project, lower the taxes by 30 to 40 percent. If you paid off all the debt, lower the taxes by 30 to 40 percent, make the entire area inviting for development. We'd be the only area in New York State and we would be using something that we are entitled, not only entitled to, but which causes us all kinds of, of burden. Every year, our winters are extended by a month. We have to pay gas bills and electric bills for an extra month because the Power Authority puts a, 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 
a barrier out there on the lake to hold the ice back, which the ice doesn't, and, and not let it come down the river because it'll congest up there. Uh, and that ice, when the wind comes across the lake, keeps us colder, raises the cost of our gas bills, and you sit there and you say, hello, something wrong here. So that was the abbreviated form of answer to question number one. <laughs> he answered about 8,000 questions in that one diatribe. <laughs> um, oh, I know, let's just... Oh, okay. Alright, I'm going to switch gears a little bit here. Some of the questions I've always wanted to ask you, which I never, never caught you on. The rent is too damn high guy. <laughs> what was he like? Did you meet him? I mean, you obviously were on stage with yeah. the guy and everything, and if you don't remember, you know, I, the I went up guy to running him. for governor with, with uh, was one of the people that the rent was too, what was his name? He's a nice guy, McClo McClellan? Mc, uh, I put you on the spot. Mc, McQuillan or something like that. He was uh, an army vet, uh, Vietnam, uh, suffered Agent Orange, and I went up to him afterwards, and I think, or in the beginning, before the the, uh, the, the debate, the debate and, yeah. uh, and we, uh, I, I congratulated him on his service, and you know, I told him, uh, um, you know, I, I had a great deal of respect for him. Uh, at the, uh, as we're sitting there, we were pretty far down from the. Moderator, we were the last two seats, mm -hmm. and and uh, we couldn't hear him because the speakers, the speakers were facing, they were at the beginning of the auditorium facing the audience. So what we were hearing was reverberated sound off the back wall, and so it was difficult. We couldn't hear directly what he was saying. He was way down at the end, so he kept turning to me, and we're looking at each other and like, what are you talking about? <laughs> And you gotta be ready, huh? Yeah? He says, you know, he turned to me and said, Did you hear that? And I said, Because we're both deaf, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and we're sitting down there, we couldn't hear half of what the hell was going on. Oh my god. It was uh it, it was a mistake, but that's the only way we could get Cornwall onto the stage. I, I wanted to go one on one with him. Uh bringing up the the minority party uh groups uh, to speak was uh uh, was the only way we can get him on the stage. I mean, he he just refused to uh, participate in the election, if you remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was, yeah. and nobody challenged him for that, and uh, and and we ended up with that farcical uh, debate. Would have been much better one on one, but he doesn't he doesn't like to be questioned, and as you can see, there's no transparency in in his administration. It's it's not good, and it's not healthy government. I remember good, the, the good night government of, uh, has absolute transparency. The night of the election, I, I spent some time with you afterwards, and, and and you weren't. It didn't to me. It didn't seem that you were bothered that you lost. You expressed, expressed your your views that it really bothered you that it was too late for New York State. Yeah. And, and, and if yeah, if that continued, now do you think things we're past, have, the, we're past the tilting point? And I mean his his entire performance during the first two years of his term is has been uh, misdefined by the by the uh, press as uh, as being responsive to the needs of the people when actually he did nothing it's all illusion in theatrics take so one issue 2020 things like that are what we think is good news for the area. What? Well, what, 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 what good news do we get when government continues to pay uh, because of Taylor Law, Tribal Amendment, Wix Law, uh, public employees out of, totally out of sync with what the private sector compensates, okay? We've allowed public employees to have such great advantage for no good reason. It's not that they work harder, not that they, that, not that they uh, have some special talents, okay, over and above the private sector, but they are allowed with direct pay and benefits to have things that the private sector couldn't even dream of. 
So then he, he, he says, well, I'm going to negotiate the, the public employee contracts. He says that on Monday. And it's going to be difficult. Now, he doesn't set out any issues or any goals or any standards that he expects in the negotiation. He doesn't tell us what the, what the negotiations are going to be about. And there's absolutely no transparency during the negotiation. But if you remember the way these things went down, on Monday, he announced on, on, the, we're going to be in an intense negotiations to settle and resolve these union questions and, uh, and, and contracts. And, and we're going we're, we're, we're to uh, uh, come down real hard on these unions without any further definition. He's allowed to do that by a weak press that reports only what he wants them to report because he threatens them with intimidation and denial of access. Okay, he intimidates them and denies them access if they, if, if, if they don't uh, uh, write what he wants. Friday, it's done. All the union leaders standing there, okay. You know, you got that growl look on their face. Oh my God, this has been terrible. What a, you know, and, and I put them to the task. And our people, yes, we negotiated out the best thing for the taxpayers. And then you really look at it, okay. What did he do? Nothing different than, uh, uh, I mean, he gave him. Oh, hang on. There. I ran out of space. It's still oh, going, though. All right. Sorry. <laughs> he, he, uh, uh, he, did he, he didn't do anything special, okay? He got them to agree to a, no raises for two years, and then he gave them all the raises. He gave them a whole bunch of other concessions. But, but they came out, and they, uh, the union leaders came out for about a week afterward. Oh, my God, we were forced to do, oh, my God, play acting. All play acting, all illusion. It's even more described, uh, or more clearly described, in the pension reform thing. Again, on Monday morning, we're gonna we're confronting this pension reform thing. Uh, he doesn't set out any standards, doesn't set out any issues or any goals. Okay, we're meeting this week, and we're gonna we're gonna get this thing resolved. Okay, and I'm gonna shove this thing down their throat, and blah blah blah. Friday, he comes in, the announcement, okay, this is, we got our, we, we have pension reform. We got another tier. We've done the 18th tier, okay, and, and now we're, we're uh, 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 these, pen, these unions have been put in their place and blah, blah, blah. And, that, and that's, that's it. That's the press conference. That's the, governor pillages the unions, okay, governor, and then on Monday morning, the union guy, Oh my God, he was so terrible. Oh, oh, we've suffered so greatly. This is an infringement on the rights of union members forever and across the world and all this other crap. And all, all friggin' play acting, all theatrics, all illusion, all right? Later on, we find out the pension reform bill didn't reform any pension, present pension. It re what it did was say for future employees over the next 30 years, We've reduced our obligations to those future employees. People don't even work for the state today. He did nothing to lower the, the benefits that are available to everybody that's working today. All right. And by the way, exempt employees, they could do it by simple legislation. They could take them out of a defined contribution into a, uh, out of a defined benefit into a defined contribution plan. In other words, uh, uh, these people are guaranteed a benefit, regardless of what return the investments make. Hmm. Okay, the the investments of, of the union monies, the the we have guaranteed them a set amount of money. Well, that's not the way your four hundred one k works. Everybody else is on a four hundred one k. The four hundred one k is whatever you put in and whatever the return is that you get on that in, uh, investment in the four hundred one k is what your benefit is. So. You know, in the end, he did absolutely nothing in corralling the public employees' unions. It was all smoke and mirrors. He did not address Triborough. He did not address Taylor Law, Wicks Law. Why should the state of New York pay what they call prevailing wages, which are always established as union wages? Why should the state of New York have to be punished, okay, and governments be punished, local governments? Uh, and taxpayers be punished and not have uh, uh, non-union workers who are the same quality uh, as union workers? Why do we have a special cast of, 
of people and a special cast of citizens in this state that can make more money, okay, and work at their own pace and, 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 and do their own thing. That is wrong. And none of those issues were addressed. Tort reform, malpractice reform, workers' comp reform, the scaffold law. Did they address anything like that in the, in the, in the, in the last two years' session? Absolutely not. Do you realize that if they put in tort reform and malpractice reform, it would lower our premiums? It, it, they did it in one of the Virginias, West Virginia or Virginia. They, uh, they imposed uh, malpractice uh, reform. It lowered the doctor costs by 40%. The doctors are paying 40% of their revenue, okay, uh, uh, for malpractice insurance. All right, and we allow it to continue because we allow these crazy awards to go out there, uh, well beyond the the needs of the people who might be entitled legally. Okay, uh, you've got to put limits on. It. Why don't we put limits on it? Because Sheldon Silver and Dean Skelos work for private per personal injury law firms that make a lot of money off of malpractice and torts. It's a simple answer. There's legislation been pending in both houses for years and years and years, but they won't let it out. And nobody asks billions of dollars in premiums that, that New Yorkers suffer and it makes it tougher to live in New York State. Did I answer your question? I think. I think was, we were talking, I was wondering what the question was here. So, uh, well, actually, we're running out of time only because the people that are watching or listening have jobs and they have to go to work. They can't sit and watch us all day, Carl. But you are going to come back a few more times, yeah, I hope, right? And we'll, uh, as, the, as they always say, the opinions expressed are purely the property of the guests and do not reflect the ownership of Niagara Hub. But uh, we'll, we'll definitely I know come you back. Agree with most and, of uh, I, you know, how do you, you can never argue with you. You're a good, you're a, you're a good man. Your heart's in the right place. You know, uh, it, it's it's great to know you. And, and you do run yourself out for casual dinner conversation and things like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah once it's know. available. You know, you, instead of having a saxophonist come to your fundraiser, you can just have Carl talk to people. I'll come. So. I'll, I'll <laughs> shoot off my At some point, somebody has to start screaming about it. These Canadians, that's our future, servicing these Canadians, okay? Over in Canada, uh, the tires on a vehicle can, can uh, 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 tires for your vehicle, okay, cost almost double what they cost here yeah. because of taxes and whatever. Yeah. It isn't the so a lot of Canadians come over here to buy tires. They buy them, they put them on their car, and they drive back to Canada. That commerce that comes over that bridge is huge for our area. Without it, we would be, we would be in big, big trouble. Galleria Mall would be in big, big trouble. The airport and the, all the hotels and everything else, all, and just about everything in this community, every industry in this community would be in big, big trouble. And we allow our Homeland Security people to abuse these people coming across. The nonsense that they put them through. If they were really looking for terrorists, there, is a much, there are much more efficient ways but what are they looking for? Oh, you have more than $10,000. You have a uh, 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 small marijuana in your car. Okay, I mean, that's, that's what it ends up. And you say, yeah. that's not what your job is. Yeah. But holding people and then making them sit on that bridge, the, the dog's got to go to the bathroom, the kids have to go to the bathroom, it's a three-ring circus and you can't get over, or you got an airline reservation out of Buffalo, which is a big... It's a, it's a big come on for Buffalo. Sure. You got an airline reservation. You got to come the day before because you don't know what's going to happen at the bridge. And we allow these the, the the homeland security to abuse these people to the point where uh, uh, it dissuades a lot of them from sure. coming down here. Sure. And that's wrong. People aren't using their boats this uh, this summer as much because they're they're being stopped by every agency yep. and. Uh, you know, if a terrorist was coming down the river, you weren't going to stop him anyway. We're I mean, over-governed, and I mean, that was Obama wanting to put, put more people to work. <clears throat> Homeland Security is totally out of control. They hired 10,000 people a month for the first year of his administration. It's ridiculous. You got that too? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah.